you guys just set your iPads down here for a second just to go over these questions that you that you did. Okay, so we went over chapters, uh, or you read 11 and 12 last week Friday. Today you're going to read chapters 13 and 14. Okay, and really here we get into uh, chapters 13 and 14. Really get into a lot of pictures of Christ, and we'll do something with that later on. Okay. Anyways, the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So let's go over some of those questions that are said. In their first meeting, the witch promised Edmund more Turkish delight when he returns. What happens when Edmund returns and asks for some? Grant? The witch gets mad and calls him a fool. Yeah, she gets mad, calls him a fool. And what does he get instead? More Turkish delight, Nicole? What did he get instead? Bread. And what did he start to do first when he got that bread? Yeah, he started complaining. The witch just totally cut him off and said to be quiet or, you know, well, again, that's the picture here, what, what C.S. Lewis is trying to make, just like sin in the world. We think, oh, this will be so great when we when we finally, and then if we sin or we get what we want, in the end it never satisfies us. So to put all of our hopes on earthly things will lead us nowhere, okay? And that's the point that Lewis is trying to make here. All right, Peter had to be brave when he fought the wolf. Look up Joshua 1, verse 9. What does this verse promise for the times when you need to be brave? Faith. Remember, what did it promise us? Um, Courtney. God okay, God will always be with us. Just as with Joshua, God will always be with us. So in our times of need, pray. When we need help, when we need courage, know that God will be there with us. But also we can say a prayer. Now, the children are worried about their brother Edmund and want to save him, but Mr. Beaver explains that only Aslan can save him. Now, explain this idea Mr. Lewis is teaching in relation to what you know about salvation. Most of us did a really good job of this. What do you do? Micah? What did you come up with? Katie? Right. They want to go save their brother, and the beaver wisely says, Sorry, kids. You can't do anything. I can't do anything. And if we try to do anything, it would be completely futile. There's nothing we can do to help your brother out. Now, the only person who can save him is Aslan. Okay? And obviously, that's a picture of salvation. Christ, salvation. It's by faith alone. Okay? It's not anything that we do or anything that we can earn. All right, what happens that finally caused Edmund to feel sorry for someone other than himself? What happens this time, Micah? The witch turned some animals that were eating in the stone. All right. She's driving past. She sees a little party. And, of course, where had they gotten those things from, and why were they happy again? Courtney? They were the Father Christmas. Okay, the Father Christmas sled came past. He gave them those things. So they were joyful, they were cheerful. Here it had been winter and winter and winter and never Christmas, and finally Christmas had come. And so they were celebrating, they were having a good time together as friends and family. And, of course, the witch wanted to prove of anything like that. So, like Micah said, she turned him to stone, and this is the first time Edmund we see him feeling sorry, thinking, boy, that was really not nice to do, and he felt bad that there they would spend an eternity as stone. All right, here was a, a, a more difficult one. Lewis describes Aslan as good and terrible. How can someone be like God be both good and terrible? Since we walk Katie through this on Friday, she can rewalk us back through it. Okay, we looked up Bible verses, right? If we go to the Bible, what does some Bible, if we, we typed in terrible, and lo and behold, we found a bunch of Bible verses that refer to God as terrible. Now, we said there's two types of terrible. We went and looked up in the dictionary. There is terrible, like, Jesse, that was a terrible thing to do to break that kid's leg on purpose with a baseball bat. Okay, <laughs> that's terrible to do, right? That's mean, insensitive, that type of terrible. But here the terrible more means what Katie was saying. More, we like to use that in the Bible, 
the word awe, A-W-E, or sometimes we talk about we fear God. You, you get that quite a bit in catechism. But the fear is not that you're afraid of catechism, or, sorry, afraid of, well, maybe not, not afraid of God, but what does it mean to, to fear God? What does that mean, Nicole? Yeah, but how do we worship him to show that we're fearful of him, that we fear God? What do we do to fear God? We're not running, cowering, and hiding under a blanket or in the closet, afraid that he's going to see us and strike us dead at any moment. Not that kind of fear. But what do you think, Grant? Give it a guess. Yeah, but what can fear mean a little bit more? Joel? Um, well, well, how would you have to behave before the Lord, Katie? Very reverently. We wouldn't go running in and jumping and shouting, but if we were coming in, we, we would come in like, okay, if we were coming before a king, there's a king, yeah, I'm coming before him. I don't want to do anything that brings a lot of attention. I want to be respectful. I want to be reverent. So I'm going to walk in there, maybe with our head down and without making eye contact initially. But we are reverent. We honor. We obey. We listen. Okay? And in that way, we show fear. We show honor and respect. Okay? And so that is exactly what they're talking about here. So Aslan, obviously a picture of God, is both good he will help them out, but terrible in the sense that the people are very awestruck by him. Okay, they know that they must be reverent. When he speaks, you better be quiet. Or if he says something's going to happen, it is going to happen. Okay? So that's exactly what, what that means there. Okay, so uh, taking a look here just for your uh, assignment. Uh, you still have the uh, vocabulary questions that you normally do. And... Uh, there are some questions. We'll go over those just a minute here. A few more dictionary things here for chapter 13. Choose a correct meaning. So they give you lots of meanings to certain words. And then you got to tell, okay, here the word still. Which one is it? Is it still one, still two, or still three? Okay. Which one of those is it? So your correct uh, dic dictionary, dic uh, dictionary definitions. And then encyclopedia here, you're just finding if you were going to look up a castle, you'd probably look up okay, C castle. So we got two C's while we picked, so we put number three there for book. Encyclopedia uh, book number three. Okay, which volume would you look in? Now the questions here uh, are not many. Why did the witch want Edmund dead? What did she feel was the reason why he deserved to die? She had the right, she felt, because... Okay. Why does she feel that way? Uh, what would happen to Narnia if the deep magic was not obeyed? Okay. So there's something that only Aslan and the White Witch know about, and they call it the deep magic. Obviously, there's no such thing as magic. But Mr. Lewis here is trying to portray a, a certain type of picture, and we'll get to that later on. But what happens to Narnia if that's not obeyed? Okay. Then when Aslan announced that the White Witch has renounced all claim on Edmund's blood, what do you think is the price that had to be paid? And what is that a symbol of in the Bible? Again, fully develop that idea and thought. If you're just putting down a few words here, thinking that's sufficient, you're incorrect. Okay? It's got to be more. got to be complete. And if it's difficult for you to get, don't be afraid to ask me. Ask for help. Okay. And then what are some of the things Susan and Lucy are feeling? And how do we feel when we remember that Christ died for us? Okay. So again, Susan and Lucy, you see some things with Aslan, and then it, it invokes in them a certain feeling. Okay. And so we want to apply that to us here. Don't tell me how Lucy and Susan felt. That's the first part. You did that. Now the second part is, how do we feel? So explain to me all your thoughts and your emotions okay, and what you're thinking there. All right, now a couple other things to point out. Your final project, you have to have this prospectus. So if you go to the page titled Final Project, you can see some suggestions. And down here you get that uh, little sheet that you have to print off by Wednesday. 
Okay. And again, uh, I don't want any students duplicating, doing exactly what the other kids are doing. So the sooner you choose something out, the sooner you're locked in at that. Okay. But you got to fill this out. Again, explain what you want to demonstrate by completing the project or show how the project. So how does this relate to the book? Okay. Yes, you're doing something from the book. That's what we want to make sure. Your audience. Your audience is going to be your peers, all of us. So, you know, you need to, who your audience will be. And what are they going to know about the subject? Well, we're going to know some stuff, but maybe there's things we overlooked. Like maybe uh, we overlooked things uh, in um, the uh, professor's house. Maybe there's lots of details in there that we overlooked, and, well, somebody can remind us about that. Okay, so who is your audience, and what are you going to tell them? How are you going to make it interesting? Do a good job. Project description will just give a, a brief overall overview of the content format. I'm going to make it this way. I'm going to make it on my iPad. I'm going to make it out of, I'm going to make it out of whatever. What am I going to make it out of? Materials, then you got to make a list of what you're going to need so that we don't all of a sudden show up the day before and go, I can't find it. We need to find materials that, we, that we're going to need. And then finally, points to consider in project evaluation. In other words, when I'm grading you, what do you think are the most important aspects that I'm going to be looking at when I'm grading? So you want to write a list of three or four things there. Well, probably neatness and organization, but that you're doing an accurate job of talent. So some of those things there, okay? So that's got to be turned in by Wednesday. Uh, on Wednesday also we'll, lead the re uh, we'll read the last three chapters, and then you've got a week to finish up your final project. But there is uh, one last thing, and I'll pull that up here. In uh, your Dropbox folder, uh, I put in uh, you're reading things something called a character analysis worksheet. Okay, and we're going to write uh, with a partner. We're going to partner up. I will determine your partners, but you're going to partner up to do this. So two people working together so that you can help each other out. It's a uh, your, it says your assignment is to write a character analysis of a major character in the novel The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Once you have chosen a character to analyze, choose three adjectives that describe that character. So what are you going to say? Okay, say Aslan or the White Witch or Mr. Beaver or Mrs. Beaver or the Robin, okay, or Edmund or Lucy or Susan, okay. Um, so there's all kinds of characters that you and your partner are going to be able to pick. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to pick three words that describe them. And that's going to be paragraph two, three, and four. That's, going to build, that's what you're going to build it on. So you can download this on there. Uh, it shows you some requirements here. Uh, I want you to write a good, what's called a thesis statement. That's going to be paragraph one. Okay? And uh, go through different things of what we're looking for. Like we shouldn't start it with this book. Okay, we want to use the title in our in our writing. Okay? So again, preparing you for high school to do a good uh, review of a book. And uh, they give I give an example in here of, a, of another book that was done. And then just some guidelines. What If you want to get an A, what is it that we're looking for? And maybe you need a little worksheet for you and your partner to work on so that you've got some good stuff to get going if you fill it out. So it's just lots of information there, but basically it comes down to you're going to tell about a character. And obviously Mr. C.S. Lewis compares characters in his story to things from the Bible. So hopefully you can relay that to us as well. We don't want to pick something, you know, like uh, Mr. Tumnus, obviously he'd be a good character to do. He's a major character, but like a centaur. Okay, well, really that, he's, that we didn't need it. Yes, we know that they're in the book but it doesn't play enough of a pivotal role for us to focus on, okay? So that's the, that's the last thing there, and uh, we'll assign a partner today, and you guys can pick a character that you want to do, and we'll go from there, so we'll do that right now. What's that? Right now.